come in. Uh, sorry about the time to wait for a while. Uh, so yeah, it's like uh, Leon, Leon, Leon has said like when you sharp, um, that's how you spell the name. So it's not so sharp. So uh, my my whole well, like, I kind of I would just always tell people like not to call me like drone expert or whatever because like most of my clients that call me a oh, drone expert, drone queen, or because like um, I always tell them that uh, don't call me that because number one I'm still learning and number two like I'm not like into like research and development of drones so I'm not like a specialist or uh, a drone engineer or whatever. So uh, for me, my background is I sort of uh, I graduated from um, university last year in, in June. Okay, uh, I was from NUS and then um, I was like looking for a job. So um, I, I specialized in semiconductors back in NUS and uh, so the jobs that I applied for were mostly like semiconductors. Uh, I never liked robots a lot. Uh, I never liked uh, doing programming, um, very mechanical stuff that, at that time. So uh, so I'll like, share I'll share with you guys later on like how I actually like jumped onto the bandwagon. Okay, so yeah, that was just a brief in introduction. Uh, so I think there's a lot of hype. On drones right now, uh, it's not a, it's not the first time that uh, I'm pretty sure all of you heard of what it is before. So for me, my knowledge of drones back then was like terrorism. Okay, like oh, there are like machines of uh, like people use like drones to uh, for, for military purposes, for spying, for surveillance. So I had a very skewed uh, concept of what drones were. Uh, I didn't know what exactly they were used for except for like those kind of stuff. And like um, when I saw what they, uh, my uh, when I saw what they were, um, they were mostly from, like, from the television. Like, I, I, I never saw one in real life. So like, my knowledge about drones was like, completely zero. Um, uh, more accurately, like, I, didn't know, I didn't know a thing about them. Okay? So why exactly do drones fascinate people? Uh, because number one, like, they're mobile. Okay? Uh, people get to control them, you get to fly them. So you're in control of, of something that is um, inanimate and you make them, animate, like, you make them alive. Okay? Uh, also because they're fun to play with. Uh, that's probably what got people interested in, in them in the first place. Um, some people do it because it's part of their job, like um, they're engineers and they do like, drones and they want to develop like aerial, uh, aerial robots. So like the original term was actually an unmanned aerial vehicles, um, UAV. But of course, for the like, it's a mouthful to say. And UAV is like uh, so many acronyms. So many acronyms. Like uh, so, what what would be a more like colloquial and friendly term for for people to get familiar with? And that would be like new drones. And also because like the sound that they make. Like, Okay, um, yeah, so that's why a lot of people are very interested in, in like flying objects. Okay, um, then like for me, uh, so let me just show you like a, a video uh, that was like in the net, like in the internet like um, a few days ago. So my friend shared this with me uh, and like these are also reasons why like uh, people get interested in them because they can do like, really cool stuff. Oops. I don't think you can hear it, uh, um, but I'll just try to ramp up the volume a little bit. So these are basically like, so someone kind of made an uh, engineer drones to like play music. So these are like an uh, orchestra of drones. So these are expert levels, not really for beginners. But uh, those are, these are the kind of videos that go viral and get people interested in them. So they'll just actually just start playing. when people like explore drones. Like, one is like programming skills, uh, another one is like like manual handling of them. Okay? Uh, so this is by this university. So they're actually so um, the reason why they're also very popular is because of the, the potentials of, of what drones can do. Okay? So um, 
and also like modifying them to like this one is pretty interesting. Uh, modifying their bodies, their frames, and how you can actually control them. So this one is it's a wrist. So this you can see is clearly programmable. Like this and the one before is programmable. Um, yeah, and like I mentioned before, it's this kind of video that like, get people interested in what they can do. Um, but often, more often than not, people have this misconception that you have to be an engineer or you need to have background in engineering and stuff like that to actually get started on drones. But, well, it's like, it's really you don't actually have to have that. I mean, even though I graduated with an engineering degree, like, I had like, zero idea of how to make one, let alone like, how to fly one. I didn't even know what a drone was, like, so like, that was like, how, how I... Um, that was like... Well, I didn't, didn't know anything about drones before I actually started. Okay. Um, okay, so now like to the, the main story, I suppose. So how I got started. Um, so like I mentioned before just now, um, I actually, so I was graduating looking for a job. Um, I couldn't, I, I was always at the interview stage but never like accepted. So I realized that uh, it could be because that the semiconductor industry was like, what people told me was there was a sunset industry. So I was like, no, maybe it's a sign that I just shouldn't like apply for jobs in that area, and I should explore other areas. Okay. So then, um, while I was like, so I was at the point of time, I was like quite depressed and like, oh, no job. Uh, so like my friend introduced me to this this thing called Repair Kopitiam. Uh, it's a volunteer program. So um, I was helping out with Repair Kopitiam, and then uh, they had this thing, this annual event called Make a Fair. So I went to Make a Fair. Uh, it was my first time that I was uh, exposed to the whole maker scene. Uh, so I didn't know what maker was, uh, but when I was at a fair and going around the booths, there were actually a lot of people uh, showcasing their drones. And then like, because of the, the hype you have in television, and you have people actually making it. So I was looking at them and asking them, do you make this yourself? And like, he said that, yeah, I, like, like, we made it ourselves, like, you know, what's the big deal? Because everyone here, is, everyone there were like makers. So if you're, you can look at the bottom, if I can like direct your attention to the bottom uh, right hand uh, corner. You can actually see the different, uh, the one over here, okay? So actually the, the frame of that uh, the frame of that drone is um, actually very thin pieces of sticks. So I look at it and like, is that a drone or like, like what, what is that, you know? So, was, uh, when, so they explained to me like what it exactly it was, and, like, it, it was in fact like a drone or a UAV. And I was like asking them, how do you actually make it? You say, like, so they showed me like, oh, this is a flight controller, this is what this is. That. So um, at that time, I was still very, uh, still a little bit clueless, but like, um, it got me interested in like, if if they can actually make this, make a drone using very like frugal parts, frugal component, um, then what? Like anyone can do it as well. So um, I was quite excited, and like say, uh, so I asked my friend like, if, if Make a Fair happens every year, like could I actually do a project and like, um, like set up a booth and then showcase my project and like, my friend told me like yeah it's possible so you just need to know the right people and like, can, I can direct the right people and then like can do something for the next year which is like, this year okay um, and then shortly after uh, there was this open call for apprentices uh, this apprenticeship program is organized by One Maker Group uh, which is the company I'm working at now so uh, One Maker Group has this um, apprenticeship program where they allow people to come in and like use the uh, you make a, use a use the equipment and, and do a project on it. So I thought like, hey, this could be an opportunity for me to learn how to make drones. So what I did was um, I just got sort of sketched a very bad design of a drone or what my idea of a drone was, and I like pitched it to to the then in charge uh, Robin. Robin is like one of the person in charge of this program. And then um, so I was calling for the interview, and then he told me like, hey, so you decided to do a drone? And I said, yeah. And then he's like, do you know anything about it? I, I was like very frank with him. I said, um, no, I have no idea how to make one, which is why I'm, I'm in this program, because I want to learn how to make one. And he said, okay, no worries. We have people in the maker community who knows how to make drones. And he's very true because um, uh, the maker community in Singapore is really big. And um, there are quite a lot of people who in that community who make drones, uh, make and fly them. They're like enthusiasts. Uh, but there are also people who are like individuals. Um, where they learn how to, they self learn how to make drones, fly drones, and then, uh, but and they, they are very active in like forums, 
like Facebook forums and stuff like that. Um, so at that time, when after I, I mean after I got accepted for the, okay, let me just show you like what I do about the drone, so you, you understand that my knowledge back then was like really bad. Um, oops. Yeah. So this was like my first sketch. It was like so bad uh, So I didn't know what the components were uh, at that time, uh, but I did my research. So like I knew you need motors. So like at that time, uh, I thought the motors they were ma they they meant for like uh, those like normal DC motors here in the Tamiya car. But obviously it's not. Right now I know it's not lah. Um, uh, and also because like people told me like you, know, you can't use that. They're not fast enough. Uh, so when I went in, when I finally when I got accepted for the program, um, I asked a lot. I asked a lot, a lot of people around me um, like, what is it you use. So the, the people like, like, told me the, the the actual components you need to actually make one. And then um, that was where it started. So I, I had this ambitious plan to like actually make one from completely from like scratch. So the ones you see just now, um, the ones over here, they have uh, they have a flight controller on it. So a flight controller is basically like a like a brain to like tell the uh, your, your drone like where to fly, you know, kind of thing. So I thought I could actually make that like, and then uh, I realized you no, know, that's like just way too ambitious. So it, not yet, not that level yet. Okay. Um, so I want to, my my project proposal uh, for that program was actually to make a drone for humanitarian for humanitarian aid. So it definitely requires sensors, like um, a temperature sensor, a thermal sensor, stuff like that to sense your surroundings and, and, and all. Um, so I had an idea of what I wanted to do, but I didn't know how to execute it. And um, when for people who just started out, they have like, very grand ideas, And um, but the only problem is how do you actually start it up? You can do a lot of research, but then what happens to all this information? You're, you're not aware of what you don't know because you haven't actually tried it. So uh, at that point of time, I was um, a bit afraid to take the first step in actually building one. And some of my uh, friends or like the, the people in the space or people in the community sort of told me like maybe you should try flying it first. Like fly a, a ready-made like, off-the-shelf kind of drone. And then um, I was like, but then it, take, it takes the fun away from actually making it. So like uh, I was a bit stubborn. Like, but then uh, now on hindsight I realized actually that's what you should probably do. Um, and then also uh, like they directed me to certain um, websites and resources to where I can like purchase my my stuff and my parts. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is like my first sketch uh, during like before the apprenticeship program. And then after I got had a better idea of what they should look like, what they are, how I should make them. Um, like this was my, my second sketch. Uh, it is a lot more like an artistic shop because I was doing some documentation. Okay. Um, yeah. And then. Uh, so what happened after that was uh, I, I finally like plucked up the courage to actually go and just buy one off the shelf and assemble it on my own. So even assembling it, I had like even I had difficulty assembling it because I didn't know ex exactly what to, what were the steps I needed to do to assemble one. Um, so I it was um, I went to Google and YouTube it and see how people actually like assemble drones. So I think on my my part like what I will. Like um, if you will be interested in, in, in making one on your own, um, I just eliminate your fear uh, and also like if you're interested, you just like just go for it, okay? And then um, like just get something off the shelf. But don't. Um, some people told me that oh you should invest in like this high, um, not not high tech but uh, slightly more expensive equipment so that you can be like on the safe side. Like you know it won't fail on you. But then I, I, I'm not a strong believer in that because like you invest too much money and if like, you don't know how to use it, then it's a, it's a little bit pointless. So you can start with something affordable, um, start something affordable and something simple to do. So this one was, so the, this, this was my first ever quad copter drone that I ever sent uh, I was quite pleased even though it's like, uh, like basic stuff. Um, yeah, so I, I looked up the instructions on the net or like a manual or like a video and I just like copied everything. And then like even when I assembled everything, like it wasn't working. So I was thinking like what did I miss out? Um, so just like it was very timely that at that point of time there was this thing called um, uh, I think maker's block. Yeah. So I finally met this um, person who's a, a complete drone enthusiast. And for him, he um, he said like like you know they're actually missing out missing out some stuff. And um, like he was very um, helpful in, in like helping me like. Turn, Helping me complete my project, lah. Okay. So like I mentioned before, like just now that that was I wanted to do something. Um, I wanted to do like a um, a drone that uh, the the purpose for the drone was to to do like humanitarian um, surveillance. Not cannot okay, surveillance, but for 
Uh, it's for drones to fly over like disaster areas and like, to sense for um, warm bodies, so like to like look for victims. Like. Um, it was a, actually a very ambitious plan as well because like I wanted to use like infrared camera. But of course, you know the infrared cameras are very expensive. Uh, so like um, again, um, the, some of the challenges was that uh, I didn't know what I didn't know exactly. So like when people advised me, they um, they were advising me based on their personal experience. So um, yeah, I was very uh, at that point of time like I was quite like I, I didn't know what to do. What, what 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 was my next step to actually complete my project? Yeah. Uh, Okay, so this was my first drone. Uh, then I realized that it's actually just too small to fulfill my um, my initial plan of, of like the, my objective of my project lah. Okay, so then I moved on to maybe I should try something bigger. And at this time, I still haven't like flew my drone. Yet. I still had no knowledge how to fly. Uh, yeah. So and then I moved on like maybe I should try something more adventurous. So I 3D printed some of my the, the second drone that I built within that um, apprenticeship program. I 3D printed my my drone parts. Um, this one, like, I didn't model it. I didn't model it myself. I sort of find, found it online and decided to print the parts and just like give it a try. Uh, so yeah, I modeled. Uh, I mean, I printed all the the. I brought it. To, I brought it today, lah. Can like just take a look later. Uh, so I pre printed the, the, the frame and, the, and everything else, and then just um, like mounted all the electronics on. Okay, and then after that, uh, yeah, that was the final outcome. Okay. Yeah. So. Now yeah, that I also bought one to practice before actually flying the other two, so that I won't like, crash it and waste a lot of money. Uh, yeah. Okay, so some challenges along the way. Uh, so challenges, there were a lot. Lah. Number one is uh, there were things that I didn't know, um, and things that I didn't know how to handle as well. Uh, you know, that was not very nicely phrased. Uh, more like. Um, I will never know that this was a problem unless I actually tried it. So like I can do as much uh, as a lot. Uh, I, can, I could do like a lot of research as I wanted, but uh, there's only so much you can prepare for. Um, but ultimately, when you actually do it up, like you, or you actually assemble the drone up, and then you actually realize that these are the problems that I initially did not foresee. Okay, and um, other things it would probably be like um, uh, there were people telling me like, uh, is this a school project? Like when I was making the drone and, and actually like assembling it or buying the parts. Like people are telling me like, is this your school project? I say like, uh, no. I say it was just a, it's a personal project. And then they were very skeptical. Like, huh? You're a girl. Why are you playing with such stuff? So um, on a on a more emotional side or social more emotional side, that was very like condescending. Um, so like uh, how I how I uh, managed that was that uh, I um, kind of like told my parents about it, and my parents were like say, you know, don't don't let people like, tell you that you can't, you're not capable of doing such things. And then also, um, during my time as an apprentice in One Maker Group, uh, because I was the only one doing something on drones, um, so they actually got me to actually run a program for um, IT College Central. Uh, like, there were a group of, like, interest group. Lah. So they actually got me to actually run the program. And then at that time, I was like, how, how can you let me run a program when I don't even know a lot about it myself? So um, the thing about the maker community in Singapore is that they're very encouraging. And um, they're like, they've, they've always this belief that uh, you're capable of, um, they have this belief of this, this mindset called the growth mindset um, that all of them possess, or like makers uh, possess and like um, this growth mindset thing is like having this uh, belief that you're capable of learning anything at any type, point of time. Like you shouldn't be very, self, uh, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be doubting yourself. Yeah, and then, um, and also like uh, there was one time uh, someone, someone kind of said like, uh, why is she conducting this class? She can't even fly her own. So like that also kind of affected me, and that kind of like uh, pushed me to actually learn more and uh, like sort of better my skills. Like. So I, I my learning my learning curve like steeped, and uh, my uh, the, the period of time where to um, right before I conducted my first class, I had to like learn learn my learn everything a lot faster, uh, and that also included me learning a new flight controller. Uh, if you've heard of like under pilot, there's another flight controller that um, a lot of people use. Um, yeah, so it kind of sped up my learning, and uh, it was a lot of like it was a lot of like motivation uh, from people around. Me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so uh, this was one of the the students that I taught uh, over over at IT College. Um, yeah, I think I mentioned this now already. 
Uh, yeah, also the other things that I did, uh, apart from like, conducting classes for uh, for schools, I conducted it like on a personal level, like with like for favors for friends. Um, I taught them, I taught them uh, how to make their own pots as well, assemble. So this young man over here, he's like ten. Uh, so uh, it was a one is to three kind of like there were a few of them, but just like three of them. Uh, they're all friends, so I like sort of like mentor them and guide them how to make. Their own. <coughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So. For any one of you who would like to get started, um, you can. Uh, there were a few sources that I, I got my like, information from. Uh, you, you probably don't want to do like too much research, and you probably like, want to just jump right in uh, to to make drones. Like, like I said, uh, just eliminate the fear that you have. Okay, you don't have to be like uh, an expert or anything to, to get started on drones. Okay, uh, so like this was one of the like very first websites that I went to. So I just watched the videos like for days and everything like to, to see how to actually do one. So it's very like modularized kind of um, lesson and um, I just followed the steps accordingly. Like, okay? And the other resources um, like Instructables, Make Magazine, um, you know, Google is like super big there because like that's your, obviously your best friend when you're like, gonna try and find like, information. Um, uh, for getting the parts, there are a few places you can get it. Of course, the easiest to get it online, you can look for Hobby King. Uh, Hobby King is famous for providing RC parts. That's this one. Uh, other places include like Ubi Avenue. Uh, Ubi Avenue, like there's Jet Hobbies. Um, um, I'm like probably like ambassador for them or something. Like, I don't know like, because no, I'm not a real ambassador, but I'm promoting them because like that's, they sell like cheap parts and I always get my stuff from there. Uh, there's another place like Fukai Building. There's a lot of RC shops there. Fukai Building. So it's at Chinatown, uh, you can also get your stuff there. Uh, but I would recommend, um, uh, so it depends on your objective of like how, why and how you want to start on, on drones. Like. It could be because you want to program one. If you want to program one, then uh, probably like getting an autopilot flight controller and then making the drone yourself will be, will be sufficient. Or um, there's another drone that's in the market right now, it's called Parrot Drone. Uh, so this one has an app. You don't need to buy. You don't need to have. Um, you don't need to buy the, the transmitter, transmitter control, uh, because the app is on your phone. You can just download it, and then uh, you can. This is a like, very easy, very simple interface called like scratch programming that you can use, and then you just like just drag and drop kind of um, certain commands where you can just control how you want to do the flight. I'll, I'll show the demo later uh, if we have space. Um, yeah, and then. Um, if your if your objective is to actually manually fly it, then you probably will want to get a transmitter uh, and then um, get a there, well there are a few ways to get it like get a, maybe get a small drone and then start flying it like for fun to practice get the hang of, of how you can actually like control it um, using radio control um, yeah so like two two um, two skills uh, I would say okay and uh, of course the community the people around you uh, I wouldn't say like uh, I wouldn't take credit of, uh, for, for everything that I did or uh, for whatever I made as well because I really got a lot of help from everyone else. Um, yeah, and try not to... Uh, even though it's... You, even though some people will say, oh, I self-taught myself and everything, uh, it's, it will, I, I, will, I really encourage um, like community sharing of information because that's where you learn more. Uh, that's that's where also where you get a lot of ideas and how you can improve for yourself and improve on what... Uh, not improve, like, um, gain more like, information of what you can learn. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I, I bought this one, uh, and also you can experiment. So the ones off the shelves they come in like really nice frames. Uh, the ones that I'm experimenting now is like to use like frugal parts, like very cheap kind uh, of accessible uh, um, parts to, to actually make the frame of the drone. So all you need to probably do is just buy the flight controller and the models and the propellers, and then maybe just the transmitter, and then you can just for the frame itself you can just use other parts like erasers, or cards, or pencils. Yeah, so there are many creative ways to actually make one now. Um, and yeah, just explore the, explore the different materials you can use. Yeah. And also you can practice flying. For me, I would say I enjoy more of the making instead of flying. Um, maybe because I'm not good at flying. But yeah, I enjoy the making process of it now. Because um, you, you kind of, uh, on a technical side, you sort of get better at um, arranging certain components on the drone. You get better at uh, exploring how you can actually make the frame, um, how you can actually uh, assemble the electronics uh, in a more, um, not say neat, but like optimize the arrangement of the like, electronic components. Like. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And then just jump right in. Don't, don't hesitate. If you like, really want to get started, just get started. 
Yeah. Okay. This is just. Okay, that's all for me. Any questions from the floor that we want to ask? I'm glad to answer to the best of uh, my ability. And I've you here played with things before. Just a shot. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so how, how you, so maybe you can just share with me why you're here. Well, there's a few of us working on a small jet engine project. Okay. Okay. And um, um, we've been putting in a fairly large drone. Okay, so like this, let me just like, sorry to disappoint some of you who already know something about drone. This is not a, like a workshop or anything, it's just like a sharing. So, um, but yeah, uh, maybe we can like, um, can tell me more in detail later, like uh, we can discuss about yeah. it later. Right, it's, we came here basically to find out more about the negative energy, mm. specifically related to drones. Because at this point, okay, my daughter's a small mm. one, that's the issue. Okay, so like... Yeah, same. I mean, same here. But but I, I mean, uh, like the make company does have like people like drone enthusiasts, and they can get really crazy with their drones. So I know of someone who has like six, and then he's experienced with different. He's experimenting with different um, materials to make his frame. So he has one that is like carbon fiber. He's another one that is like three D printed. So like, okay, the reason why what the three D printed mine because I saw that his was three D printed and it was a movable part. Okay, then he also experimented with this new material called uh, glass fiber. It's not fiberglass, it's glass fiber. So it's a, like a, uh, it's, it's a fairly new material. It's very light and it's very strong. Uh, yeah, so he, he made a, a, a quad copter using that material. And he's like, just a sharp, like, I got this new drone. Are you jealous? You know? yeah. And then uh, he also has um, like hexacord, hexacopters. Uh, he has one that's a tricopter. So he 3D printed his tricopter. And uh, like everything, all his... Um, Drones were like handmade by him, so I was very, I was like very impressed by him, um, because uh, he, for him, is that like same, similar to me. He started off with like, like zero knowledge, but um, mm, I think uh, it, he sort of warned me like you know this like drone thing is like a black hole. So once you get started, you can't like, go back, and it kind of burns a hole in your pocket. But of course, for me, I'm like very conscious of the money that I throw out. So uh, I try to. I try to look for ideas online, see how I can actually like make like cheaper ones or like more affordable ones, like and, and um, share it with like, people. So right now, uh, so my job in on the maker group is like uh, a curriculum developer. So I like teach teach students how to make them and uh, also teach them that you can actually use like affordable, and easily accessible materials to actually make one. You don't have to spend like five k or one point like a lot of money like, to make one. So yeah, that's just part of what I do. Yes. Uh, there's very few places in Singapore that you can actually legally fly. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As far as we know, um, nowhere near the close vicinity of the populated area or mm -hmm. in their space. Uh, the only place I do know that you can legally fly is a small field out in Holland Road. Is there any other place? Yes, there is. Uh, like, okay, so like uh, some people fly at like Pongo Fields. Uh, it's, in the, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a huge, it's a huge area that people like fly and stuff. And also, uh, another place would be the town. Okay, not town area. It would be like near Marina Bay, Marina Bay area. There's like a huge field as well, and a lot of people fly there. Uh, so like, um, I know of someone who flies his drone like really super high uh, to take like aerial photography. Um, uh, when I say really high, it's like like 20, 30 stories high. Which is actually not allowed. Uh, but just so you know, you actually need like a permit if you want to fly something that is like more than seven kg or like super high. Yeah. So that's another area. Another area. Um, so one is Pongo, the other will be like the MDFC area, a Marina Bay Sands. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So. Uh, number one, never fly it like when you're very close to someone else. Okay, uh, it would be good to have like a propeller guard, a prop guard, uh, to like prevent the drone, the, the props from actually cutting anyone. And it also depends on the size. So like if you're dealing with like really super small ones, uh, toy pocket ones, um, you won't get hurt lah. But it's a good practice to actually like fly it. Maybe um, okay. So like from distance from here to 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 like that glass wall would be probably a safe distance. Never fly it anywhere close to. Never fly it anywhere where there's like a lot of human traffic. And um, I wouldn't, 
Um, also, like, uh, if you're planning to fly with super big drones, make sure that, uh, like, what you, you shouldn't be in an area where there's like a lot of people. Um, what else? Okay, so for drones that are above seven kg, you need to you need to apply for a permit with um, CAAS. Okay, uh, I think that's that's about all that I, I know right now. Uh, also, that in Singapore, there are actually regulated areas where you can actually fly drones. Not everywhere you can fly drones. Uh, for me, I sometimes I fly in the house, but because I'm I play with small drones and uh, because there's no one around uh, But yeah, don't. Yeah, that's that's all that there is. There's not a lot. Of, there's not very. There's not. The, the rules or the regulations in Singapore are not super strict. Um, I wouldn't say super strict, but they're not like uh, um, they're not a lot, lah. Yeah. And that's that's all that I know, because I don't I don't fly commercially. It's mostly like in small areas. Yeah. Sometimes I fly it in like the uh, foyer of, of the building where I work, and that's open space. Yeah. Anything else? Yes. For zero, uh, for people who have zero knowledge, uh, what would be the best? Uh, I do have a okay. Um, okay. That's a, that's. Well, I mean, like even for me, I, I started from like ground zero, uh, or like even below ground zero. Um, you can depends. Like like I said just now, it depends on like your, your um what you want to achieve. So if you want to know how to, yeah, if just for hobby, you can just start off probably with like buying a tiny drone and just like playing with it, and then later you can actually hack it, like you open it up, see what the components inside, or like um. So let's say. Uh, like for me, I asked my friend. Uh, so she, she told me like you. Uh, she told me to actually just buy one off the shelf, and then like um, if I wanted if I wanted so badly to actually make one, buy off the shelf that is unassembled and assemble it yourself. Um, and uh, maybe a more affordable way is to get like a tiny drone and then just like practice flying it first, and then later you hack it, uh, see the parts, and then you purchase those parts and then you make it on your own. Yeah. So it really depends on your learning. Do you, do you practice flying with a tiny drone yeah. first? Before you move on to the yes. more powerful ones, really it's very important to obtain that skill first. Otherwise, the hobby is gonna burn a hole in your pocket like that. Yeah, else. that was my mistake, la. Like for yeah. me, I was super stubborn. So Learn your flight first. yeah, um, but there are also like flight simulators online. Uh, there are free ones. If you're an Android user, you just search for like FPV Free Rider, and it's like a free software for you to actually like learn how to fly. Yeah, uh, if it's for if you are having an iPhone, then you have to pay for the app, la. Yes. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? Um, well, for me, it's because uh, I was I was really interested. Uh, I'm a very curious person, so like I was very interested in actually like I I don't want to. Uh, when I learn something, I don't want to see it on the surface. So like, I, I actually wanted to know like, what goes into a drone, how does it operate, what are the components uh, a drone actually needs. So on my part, like I, I was very adventure. I wanted, to be, I was quite adventurous in wanting to know how to make one. Um, and also because like it was like a personal challenge for myself. Like like since they can make a very simple uh, drone, then well anyone can. So like that was for me. But for some people, it's just that um, they just enjoy seeing something flying, or they just enjoy being like, in control of like uh, 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 an object. So like they learn how to fly, like they just buy one and just fly. And then some people, because they want to do things that they cannot do on their own as a human being, like for example, taking aerial photography. So some like maybe in the past, like in order to take aerial photography, you probably have to be in a helicopter and like be a professional photographer and take pictures. But now you have like DJI cameras mounted on them and all you have to do is just learn how to fly uh, maybe st start small first learn how to fly simple ones first before you fly bigger drones and then when you have better control over your drones you're more stable then like, you can take like aerial shots like, so those are like, some of the things that people do and also like uh, maybe in a more research industry type of drones people use it for like uh, uh, like uh, forestry surveillance so of course that like is a more uh, bigger plans like. yeah. yes yeah, yeah, but okay. Cost in terms of uh, making your own. So okay, maybe I get, uh, like this for this one, this one here. Like making your making like this, like a very simple one probably wouldn't cost more than like hundred dollars, maybe less less than hundred USD. Uh, but the one that I first assembled, um, this one cost me about hundred a uh, thousand and five. Yeah. So the secrets there. <laughs> 
So yeah, it's like a black hole like, when she gets started. So you can just buy one. Just buy one. You could like I mean Mustafa sells a ton of drones. You can just get it from there. Just practice how to fly. Yeah, if if you are interested in that. Yeah. Well, I did. I was like kind of keen, but so mm -hmm. I went into the simulations. Hmm. So I bought a CD for thirty five dollars. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it has a numerous uh, cockpit configuration chart, for mm -hmm. even hexagonal or more. And I invested in that transceiver, six channel transceiver, for three hundred eighty dollars. Mm -hmm. So that was a good cost. Two spot dollars, and I was actually buying uh, on the computer. I really crashed many times. So I computer? realized if you really have one, when you build a bar, when you crash, it really brings it back. Yeah. So, like, for some people, you can actually just start off with a simulator. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, if you don't mind like starting off with like, the actual hardware, you can just go for it as well. Uh, like that's that's the only way you actually like learn from your mistakes because like there are people that are telling me um, like uh, like I'm telling you this so that you don't make this don't so that you don't make this mistake but sometimes you need to make that mistake to actually learn something and uh, there are some processes like along the way I realized that um, what well, is a necessary mistake that I have to make yeah like uh, like breaking your breaking your uh, your propellers that's something very common so my friend told me like. Why you only buy like four extra propellers? You should buy like at least a hundred, you know. Yeah. And also because propellers were very cheap, like, So yeah, that's why you, that's why you like told me. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So you don't have four motor, do you? Hmm. Do you know how how the motor would control forward, backward? Oh yes. Okay. So um, that is also like part of uh uh. So for a, for a drone to actually move forward. Like the, the back motors actually just move faster and the front ones will actually just lower in speed and then like same for the different directions. So if let's say you wanna rotate it, like like have it on the same plane but rotate it, then like uh, the motors like on the side will, motors on one side will move faster than the other motors. So there's this thing called the electronic speed control, ESC. Uh, ESC is not escape, it's actually like electronic speed control. So on your like transmitter, you actually like do the controlling from there and like um, there's a receiver on your on your drone that will like they send a signal from like both sides telling sort of telling the the um, adjusting the uh, amount of like current that goes into and out of the motors to adjust the speed of the motor so that's how they rotate move forward move backward move sideways and stuff like that yeah so um, so like just maybe I'll just like briefly like say what goes into an actual drone so you have the motors uh, for smaller ones you don't actually have a uh, uh, smaller mo smaller drones use brushed motors, like the normal DC motors. While for bigger ones, you have like brushless motors. <laughs> so brushless motors move really fast. Uh, like the one here I have can actually like really cut you. Um, there were a few incidents where like uh, my friends got cut, and like the, the cuts were like really deep. So like it's good to have like a prop cut. And like brushless motors can move really, uh, they spin really fast. Like uh, also you have to check the rating of the. Check the rating of the motor. So every time you buy a motor, there's actually always the, the, the rating that's, that's over there. Like uh, it tells you your okay, uh, your, your RPM, uh, the, the amount of voltage that you need to power it up. So you just like take note of that, and then you buy the batteries accordingly. So like uh, usually, not drones usually use like lipo batteries, uh, lithium polymer batteries. Uh, you also have to check the rating for that and see whether it's suitable for your for your motor and your like flight controller. And also, uh, yeah, I think that's. To add to your question, mm -hmm. uh, to your answer, right? the three ways that the drone controls its own movement is through what is called pitch, yaw, and roll. Right? Pitch basically means how fast the motors are going. The faster they go, the higher the uh, drone goes. Yaw is, if this is the back of the drone, yaw simply means it moves this way. Right? And roll means if it slants left or right, forward or backward, like she described just now, in order to make those necessary movements in the air. Pitch your own roll. So those are the like more accurate terms. Yeah, for me it's just forward back, sideways. <laughs> yeah. I mean I'm from, I use those terms only when I'm teaching, but like for the open <laughs> for everyone to get started, like those are yeah. But thank you very much, Daniel. <laughs> You said there was a guy who flies very high mm -hmm. in the SPV mode. Sorry? You said a guy that flies very, very high mm -hmm. at 20, 30 stories. I, I think like, it's about that height. Because like, I was like actually at the, twi at the 33rd story and then I saw it like all over there, like it's at eye level. So, so I assume it's the 
So what's the what's the legal uh, the legal price? To be honest, I'm not very sure, but uh, you, I think for him probably was for like commercial reasons because you. Well, when you when you have a permit and you want to fly a certain height or a certain uh, weight of, of your um, drone or quadcopter or hexacopter or whatever, you actually have to like write some kind of um, uh, I think like letter of approval, get some letter of approval or something to fly from the authorities. I'm not very sure because I don't do commercial flight, but that's what I think. So the information for that can actually be seen in the CASS CAS website. You can actually fly really like this, like like So like uh, they probably use like the flight controllers can be programmed like in computer. So then they uh, like they just program it like, like uh, write a certain write, write codes for it like how they um, uh, where they move where they should be positioned at which uh, maybe like adjust the rhythm of, of uh, like synchronize the synchronize the, the movements of each drone. Yeah. So that's more of a programmable platform. Let's say that software will allow for it, then that, that will happen. Like uh, some, like okay, so so some flight controllers, like maybe like other pilot, like inside the interface where you configure it, right? Uh, there's actually like a, a homing sequence or like um, uh, okay, like a lot lah. Uh, so like they have sensors on the drones to actually uh, make the drones smart. So if, let's say there's an obstruction or if something goes wrong, then like what is the the leak's plan? So that is also considered in the like the programming and the coding for for that. Drone. Does it answer your question? Uh, can also. This one all the... Okay, guys, we will... Uh, after this, we will go outside and fly this mini drone a little bit. I think that's what all you guys want, right? Or who doesn't want that? Okay. Yeah, this is a no-fly zone. Okay, so basically, uh, we will go and uh, fly a little bit. Uh, anybody else has any more questions for Shah? Uh, but I do have a comment to help people understand what's inside the drone. You've got the general compass and inertia sensor in all modern drones. And the computer uses that to sense any movement in any direction with the drone. So the computer is making corrections all the time. Without it, the drones will be pretty much impossible to study. Uh, the better the controls are for this, the more the drone. So you use like micro controllers or like green Similar flight chips, yeah. Okay, yeah, so just to touch on, on what uh gentleman said. So like um there are sensors on the on the flight controller. Okay, so like these sensors are like some uh, there's, there's a gyroscope, there's an acceler accelerometer, um, like so they sort of sense the orientation of, of your of your drone and then like uh, they adjust accordingly and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for okay. yeah. so I'm not a drone expert, huh? <laughs> I'm just like getting stuff with it, okay? Uh, so anyway, um, like if you're interested to see more, okay, um, you can actually check out this in the fair. Uh, free advertisement. Uh, so this is this thing called Maker Fair Singapore. It happens every year. Uh, uh, people that go there, or people that set up booths over there, like they are, they are very, um, very creative, uh, very interesting people. Uh, a lot of you can expect to see a lot of drones. Uh, so um, there, there, definitely will be drones. Uh, 
um, there'll be new robots like um, I don't know you can expect to see like things like I don't know uh, smart cars, BB games, etc. Because that's, those are like the in thing now. Um, you can see like Leon stuff, yeah, uh, VR stuff. Uh, yeah, a lot of cool things. So just check it out. It's gonna be at uh, SUTD, Singapore's Singapore University of Technology and Design. Uh, it's like at the east side. If you live in the east side, then you know where it is. And uh, yeah, we all. The, the, if you wanna uh, be introduced to the maker community, this is a huge event for all for us. Okay. Okay. Can I do your Facebook? Okay. Um, Showcase there, which is the interactive tablecloth project. Uh, if you guys are free, come down and take a look. So it's a project whereby you is animation together with electronics, and basically you can interact with the tablecloth. So when you touch the tablecloth, it actually animates. This will be shown next month at the uh, end of next month at Maker Fair. space to do some flying. Okay, let's give our shop a 